Ah, uh, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Take one. Well, welcome back uh, to another video on some of the features of ECIO. Uh, this particular one is uh, developing a risk register, something that uh, most project managers and most managers uh, have, in fact, um, need to do. So we're going to show you a couple of uh, interesting ways to develop a risk register, how you can track uh, some of the risks, developing mitigation plans, etc., as well as uh, some of the particular components that we have, in fact, read, um, we have um, tied to our risk profile on this. So um, one of the things is we do have um, uh, an issues log and track issues uh, a little bit differently. We kind of approach risks from the perspective of an unrealized issue. So there's some uh, developments, uh, some ways to handle it in terms of a plan of action, how you back to the issue at hand. Uh, uh, so different ways to handle uh, risks uh, in terms of financials and uh, how it might affect your budgets, etc. We won't go necessarily into the details on that. We want to keep these uh, presentations um, as uh, quick as we can. So one of the first items that we may need to do is, in fact, we've got a, a risk uh, that we've identified. Um, we want to see if, in fact, uh, that risk has been recorded by anybody else and uh, what they've done in fact to um, um, mitigate it and maybe we can take advantage of that same plan. So we're going to look at, uh, we have some risks associated with uh, some facts, uh, particular capabilities in our project and so we want to look at what they've done. So we'll do a search and in fact capabilities not proven. So there is something out there. It's been uh, identified as a technology risk within a uh, systems and infrastructure. So we're just going to bring that up. And here's the information that we collect on our particular risk uh, mitigation plan um, status. It's been approved or not approved, the health, target probabilities, etc. on that side of it. Uh, the data was opened etc. on that um, perspective, uh, if there's impact in first dollars, etc. that we may want to calculate a little bit later. Uh, overall description, some comments. Uh, in fact, we have a strategy to approach how we're going to manage the response on it, um, as well as some of the other um, as well as some of the other aspects that we want to track with the risk. Who was open, who the owner is, if it's tied to a project, uh, if it's tied to a change notice, uh, who the functional assignment within our organization that owns this. If we want to tie it to a specific strategy that the corporation is using, we'd do that. Uh, if we want to track this one by deliverable, then we can do that. Uh, any of the functions that might be affected, if there's a website as, as well as associated with it. Um, and also the information that we can log against a particular risk uh, in terms of uh, if we want to track the action items, uh, who else is affected by it, who do we need to talk to, and there's RACI diagrams on that. Financials, as I mentioned, in case there's uh, implications on our project budget, uh, what we need to do on that projects that this also may be related to. So we've come up with this particular risk. It may affect uh, some of that. And then if there's uh, back to the risk taxonomies in terms of, you know, other other categories that this risk may cross into, uh, we want to attract those various uh, items. UC is obviously under construction. So if there's issues attached to it, other CCNs um, and other strategies, a little bit more detail on that side of it. And uh, some of the reports. And we'll go into some of the reports on that. Um, so this is uh, a little bit more detailed. This is probably uh, cap in a maturity model, a little bit, uh, a little bit more senior. There are simpler ways to, in fact, uh, track risks if we wanted to keep it at a at a basic rudimentary level. Uh, if we had a deliverable or a status report that we're doing, and we just want to track, in fact, that we have this risk and who owns it, etc. So we can track them through. Uh, types of action items and I'm not going to go into detail on those. Uh, there is a separate uh, video on how we do status reports etc. that will be coming out. Uh, but just to illustrate, here is in fact um, 
a, a little bit more detailed action item register that we have um, and we could just have our normal status report and this in fact is tracking um, you know specific risks um, uh, what the details, the status is, who might own it, any uh, uh, estimated completion dates, etc. on that side. Um, so it's uh, it's another more simplistic way of doing it. You don't get into the mitigation. You're just getting into, in fact, what we need to do to tackle that particular. So if we go into um, if we go into uh, again back to um, our reports let's say so the standard one is we wanted to print out and in fact do details on it we're just going to print out the profile uh, for this particular one it's facts so we'll select under risk again facts capabilities not proven select that item do ok and this brings up our uh, risk profile and printed form that we can email to individuals print out etc there's also ways to collect more information on this one if we wanted to send this out ownership uh, we did key in a description but these are some of the fields that we could have kind of keyed in the actors as I mentioned are those people that either have some responsibility in um, participating with or that uh, are influenced by this particular ri this particular risk the risk categories and I'll show you a little bit on that uh, and the action items that were all tied into that so in this particular one we don't have uh, any action items we haven't entered in any action items so that's the profile um, again I was talking a little bit about the uh, and I'll bring up this uh, the categories here's some of the categories that we have in fact uh, in the system um, they keep getting augmented um, uh, and there um, uh, there's uh, some different ratings on these ones uh, so for in their development environment development processes there's some general so these things will continually get um, 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 uh, driven out. Uh, the level of the interesting thing is if there's some standard weights that we have within it in terms of understanding the influence, uh, the level of oversight, if, let's say, by the organization on if we do have a risk that's associated with our work environments or business risks, um, who would we normally inform on that side of it? Uh, customers etc if there was something on that side that we needed to kind of go outside of the project or our, our organizational structure then um, then uh, that would tell us generically who we need to touch base with and, and supplement maybe that actors component um, the other uh, item okay so we will uh, uh, now we'll go into if we wanted to go into uh, some of the report listings we'll clear off some of these screens we'll go into uh, boo -boo 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 -boo, let's see we'll go into project overview um, so this will give us kind of our resource listings on it uh, we're going to bring up uh, our project we happen to be working on is in fact uh, store uh, the store equipment rollout and so these are with the dates these are all the risks ownerships etc so as a high level overview um, if there's scores and impact on those items certainty factors then in fact um, these are, are an overview of some of the risks we are tied into on that side of it um, this is just the project information and if we wanted to in fact get into going into this we wanted to get into a little bit more uh, details then we can in fact uh, uh, just the expanded form of the of the profile uh, ST store equipment roll up so this this will be a little bit more detail listings of the fact uh, of each of the uh, risk within it so you can if you were having separate risk meetings that you need to get into more of the details uh, then you can oops you can you can do that um, so these are the categories that we talked a little bit of about before um, who the owners are uh, to resolve some of these ones so general so 
on that um, in this one we do have some action items uh, what we need to do and we can try follow up on the statuses on each of those etc on that side of it so uh, the other uh, aspects I think um, for the risks um, obviously we can tie to uh, to the ownership making sure that whoever owns that one is coming up and doing a follow-up plan on it uh, to the other affected stakeholders and parties that may be outside of either your organizational structure or your particular project uh, risk can apply to programs or portfolios uh, to business risks etc that if you're tr you're trying to follow up on some of those um, then um, you know it, it keeps uh, keeps that all organized for you and that ends this video on um, developing a risk register and uh, conducting the follow-up on that. Um, if you uh, have more questions, you can try to get a hold of us or get a hold of us at support at eciosolutions.com or uh, more information is available on our website at www.eciosolutions.com.